All right. I'm going to try this one more again. And if this don't work, I'm going to bed. <laughs> if this doesn't work, I'm going to bed. I ain't going to lie. Um, so, had like a headache anyways. So, yeah, if this doesn't work. And I apologize. I don't know what's going on. Because I cut my um, Wi-Fi off. Matter of fact, my computer is never... My computer is never connected. Well, I ain't going to say never, but my computer, I keep hardwired. I don't have Wi-Fi on the computer, so it's hardwired in. Um, my phone, the first time I tried to come back, it was Wi-Fi. And I turned that off and it was still acting monkey. So, you know, I don't know what's going on, you guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And watch me touch something and it messed everything up. Found me again? Thank you. Hey, Barbara Nance. You know what? I just realized going mobile, this darn thing, it, um, I have to tell it to show me all the chat. And that's some trash. That's garbage. Hi, Sheila Chan. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. I don't know. It's, um, and I probably lost our mojo for the rest of the night for everybody. And I apologize, especially the new people. They don't want to see folks messing up. <laughs> so we ain't going to worry about it, though. I'll hang out with you guys for a little bit, and then we will. You know what? It was going on 9 o'clock anyway. Didn't even realize it. So, But otherwise, what have you guys been working on? Buffering again? Yeah, no. So yeah, that's not me. That's not me. That's not me. That is definitely YouTube. Because I'm on Verizon Network. So if all the networks in the world are screwed up, then, you know, sorry. That's not me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Wow. That sucks. I apologize for that. I really do. Alrighty, y'all. Well, I ain't gonna keep making y'all suffer with some buffering. So I will see you next week or if not tomorrow oh it happens is good i saw we yeah no yeah working for you okay well that's good flora hi flora <laughs> langston langston i like your name new i haven't seen your name here before what's good eddie j oh it's working now tracy okay well dang i was on you know like peace up because i don't want to be aggravating people I know you're new. I haven't seen your name before. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. We're having technical difficulties. YouTube isn't wanting to let me be great tonight. <laughs> because I was doing really well connected landline. So then I got onto the phone and then like took off Wi-Fi from the phone. It was on Verizon and then Verizon buffering and the internet buffering no i don't believe in coincidences i am not a coincidence believer so i knew where that problem stemmed from so youtube needed to get their act together hello everyone hello hello so what we were discussing to the new person who just joined in and all you others that have come back even though right now i'm showing 10 <laughs> Um, we were discussing new things for the folks who are new to embroidery, right? Um, and we discussed terry cloth and how to embroider on terry cloth. Some common questions and misconceptions with um, terry cloth. Barbara Nance, congratulations on your magnetic hoop, ma'am. Because when I tell you that thing is awesome sauce, I love my magnetic hoop i love it very very much use it a lot around here so congratulations to you <laughs> i want to actually get the other sizes one day that's what i'll do is finish out my uh, collection of the other sizes of the magna hoops uh, but for right now i just have the one so that hasn't been high up on my priority list though you guys, so I am here in North Carolina. There is going to be an everything embroidery market show uh, in Greenville, South Carolina this coming week, Thursday and Friday. All right, so I don't know who 
is near. Hello, Deborah. Again, thank you for coming back. <laughs> for your single needle, yes. Yeah, some machines can use it. Not all of them, though. That's the bad thing. Some machines can use it. Some machines can't. You have to be careful. Hey, April, thank you for coming back. <laughs> um, if anyone is thinking about going to the Everything Embroidery um, show, please let me know. Because I would love to meet you all and say hi. Hello, Will. I know Will is going to be there Friday, I think. Hello, Miss Social Dev. Hello, Jennifer. Thank you for joining us, Jennifer. We appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, Dorothy Gaston, for coming back. Will will be at the Everything Embroidery Show on Friday. So I look forward to hanging out with Will for a little bit on Friday. Amy says, found your channel and it inspired me to buy an embroidery machine. Just got your brother on Friday. We need to ring the bell for you. Hey, Leah. Yes, I am back. But we are going to ring the bell for Miss Amy and her new machine. <laughs> Congratulations, ma'am, on your new baby. <laughs> Please make sure that you are uh, sharing a lot of the pictures of the new projects that you're going to be doing with your new baby, Miss Amy. <laughs> 47 Malone. Hello, King Please tell me what number needles to use on a t-shirt. Thank you so much. Um, the number needles that you would use on a t-shirt, first and foremost, you want to use ballpoint needles or stretch needles, okay? Ballpoint or stretch. That's the first thing you want to make sure that you have on your embroidery machine because t-shirts um, and your polo shirts, they're made out of a stretchy type of material, okay? Okay. And because these stretchy fibers are easy to cut, you can't, you shouldn't use a regular needle to embroider on these. So that's what the jersey knit or stretch needles are for. Hey, Janet McKinney, thank you for joining us again. So definitely, first and foremost, grab a jersey or stretch needle. After that, some of the needle manufacturers that say stretch or jersey knit, some of them will have a size to it. You can use 7511, you can use the 8012, or you can use the 9014. Um, I have been suggesting the 9014 needles lately. Yes, Shamina, we are back, far as I can tell. <laughs> um, the 9014 needle is what I've been suggesting for embroidery because the eye of the needle is larger and it makes for less thread breakage on your embroidery machine. But if you um, find a needle like one person I've been talking to today and suggesting to him to get the stretch jersey knit needles, the stretch needle, it didn't really have a size that I'm remembering on there. Um, so I just told him, just make sure it says stretch. The universal needle, if it says stretch, then that's a ballpoint needle. And that's what you want to use. And Miss Sylvia, hello. Welcome. As always, always love having you in here with us this evening. So you guys, fortunately, since the internet or the uh, YouTubes was messing up on me, this evening what we're going to do is hang out just a little bit longer this evening because normally i'm off at nine or i try to end it at nine but we're going to stretch it out and have a good time and see how far we can get before mr lowry finds out that i'm still over here <laughs> i'm still over here trina you almost missed me no no you you didn't you're deep in the two orders tonight glad you get to see some of the show this evening yes because um Unfortunately, I was buffering earlier. I did have one show going on my laptop and YouTube just kind of like pulled the rug out from up under me this evening. So everything froze and we had to switch up to mobile. And then the mobile was wanting to act up. It was just like, it's been a nightmare. <laughs> it's been a nightmare. And I'm going to have to go back and clean up that mess later tonight. So... Um, I'm glad you're in here with us and we're going to stretch from nine to probably about 10 tonight. But tonight's show was about new embroidery. And for those who are new to doing embroidery and answering some of those questions that you may have, um, and trying to make sure that the new people understand. So what we're doing is channeling the older folks, the old heads and the ones who've been doing embroidery 
for a while and helping make sure that your suggestions get out there to the new people, right? So one of my things is it's always good to learn from experience. And if you don't have experience in embroidery, well, I got a room full of folks that have been doing embroidery for many, many, many years, all right? And so we were discussing terry cloth and how to embroider on towels. That was a really good discussion for those who may have missed it. You want to um, have tear away, two, maybe one, two layers of tear away underneath some water soluble stabilizer on top. Or Will with Carolina Thread Place uses cutaway stabilizer on the back of his towels and water soluble stabilizer on top. And either way works perfectly fine. It's up to you how you want to do your embroidery with that. But what I suggest is go to Dollar Tree or Walmart buy a pack of some El Cheapo hand towels and practice doing embroidery on those first before you go and spring from some really pricey towels and then you wind up with some embroidery that you are not happy with okay now to make sure that folks understand again since we missed out on it uh with the last video and i may delete the last video i don't know but i kind of want to keep it because we were ringing the bell for some folks um so i'll go ahead and show again because that's another source of confusion that i've seen quite a lot uh, a lot of the new embroiderers are like, what is WSS or what is water soluble stabilizer? WSS is water soluble stabilizer, okay? And water soluble stabilizer, again, is this film looking stuff. And what you do is you either hoop your towel or you float your towel, okay? So if you hoop your towel, you put your towel in the hoop, just like you would. Uh, hoop anything else that you're going to embroider then you lay this on top of the towel then do your embroidery with this still laying on top of the towel on the surface because what this does is it holds down the nap on the surface of the towel so that your embroidery comes out looking much cleaner because otherwise if you don't use this then the fuzz of the towel can kind of like override or you know lay over your embroidery and it won't look as clean so that's what this is for um, and pretty much that's just about the only thing this is for. So you would use this to lay on top of anything with a nap. So that could be fleece for blankets or the um, minky fabric with the dots or uh, comfy dot fabric for babies. You would lay this over the top of it before doing embroidery. That's what water soluble stabilizer is for. So this is good for that. And you can just tear it right off or if need be you can use a q-tip with water on it and it'll wipe this right off of the surface so that's what this is for but there's also another water soluble stabilizer available and that one looks more milky it's not as easy to see through and what this is used for is making freestanding lace designs so freestanding lace is an embroidery that you would embroider on this and then you dip it in the water and when it comes out of the water all of this stabilizer melts away and just the embroidery is left behind kind of like you know lace doll doilies dollies i don't know what they call doilies <laughs> whatever the name of them are that's kind of what you're dealing with is lace um embroidery so that's what that is for and i'm gonna go and make sure that i'm not missing any questions on that so you're welcome king king at 711 patrick says our internet has been wacky too yeah this is a pain in the butt oh my gosh miss sylvia you got your se 625 well congratulations of course i'm gonna ring the bell for you I know you've been trying to get your machine stuff squared away for quite some time, so I'm glad you got that worked out. Betty L., I'm glad you found us again. Thank you so much, Tracy. We're here to help. Patrick Quinlan says, I found some chalk vinyl that I've been having fun with. Chalk vinyl is awesome sauce. It is a lot of fun. And you can make quite a few different in the hoop projects with that. Trina's creation says that's what I'm working on right now. Some bath towels and I use WSS. I learned that from here on the Baby's Booty channel. Well, thank you for letting me know that. Betty asks, what do I sell on my website? Um, well, 
let me try and remember what all I do sell on there. I know there are des a few designs, simple things to introduce people to certain things. Like for instance, I know I have a key fob on there to teach you how to make a key fob. Um, I also have a couple of blank patches to show how to make patches. Um, so we'll, I don't know, what else do I have on my website? I, I actually don't go on there too terribly much. I have some scarves that you could purchase. Uh, but that was mainly for around the holiday time when scarves was, you know, starting to pick up. I do have quite a few of those left. Um, and right now I can't think of what else I have on that site. I have so much going on sometimes. It's difficult to keep up with everything. And uh, selling things really isn't something that I'm trying to, um, what's the word, encourage, so to speak, unless it's a digital file that you would go and get whenever you need it. I also have a, like I have a puffy font that you would use with foam that's available on my website. You can purchase that um, because it's digital. But as far, oh, and I also sell our Hoop is a Group t-shirts. Those are for sale on there. And I also have coffee mugs uh, on there that say happy embroidering. So just a few things, but not really anything major is on there because I'm trying to gear this more towards teaching rather more so than trying to sell items and make money off of them. So um, I don't really have too much on there. And Will, thank you. You do have a video on uh, freestanding embroidery of butterflies and a rose lace design that is on his channel, Carolina Thread Place uh, on YouTube. So you definitely can go to his channel and check that video out and you'll see the water soluble stabilizer, not the clear one, but the other one in action. You'll be able to see it. Trina's Creations, where do you purchase the rolls like you're showing right now? That particular roll of water soluble stabilizer I purchased from Madeira.com, Madeira Mart rather.com. Madeira is where I purchased my thread from. That's a brand that I use and love. Um, Will also sells Sulky Thread on his website. So if you're interested in purchasing thread, I don't sell thread on my website, but Will sells it on his. Um, so if you're interested in purchasing thread or um, stabilizer, you're welcome to get that from um, Madeira as well. So that's where I purchase most of my stabilizer from um, in those large rolls. Now you also can purchase smaller size rolls of stabilizer from designsbylittlebee.com. She sells awesome stabilizer actually. Shamina says, is there a universal needed for everything? No matter the material, I don't want the headache of trying to figure out what needle I need for everything. I don't really care how much it is. I am lazy. I understand. I am too. I'm not going to lie. Uh, because one of the things that's frustrating is starting a project in the middle of embroidery. And then you're like, dang, nabbit, what needle am I supposed to be using? And then you got to go find a needle and then you got to get your staple bad thing is with embroidery you kind of do need to know what goes with what as far as like stabilizer and whatnot um but needles for the most part the majority of the embroidery that i do i use a top stitch needle okay it's a top stitch needle and the reason why i use the top stitch needle is and this is of course exaggerated because this really isn't the exact size but your top stitch needle the eye of the needle the hole where the thread goes through is about this tall whereas your regular needles the eye of the needle is about this tall okay so it's well more than half the size of a regular needle so because that larger size eye in that needle is there it allows the thread more movement as it's going in and out of the fabric thus less thread breakage okay so i generally suggest a top stitch needle for most of your general embroidery now when it comes to embroidering on stretch though you really need to switch to that jersey or stretch needle because what happens is the regular needles are sharp, have a sharp point on the end. They're not blunted. So it'll go through these t-shirt fibers and cut holes in the threads of your t-shirts or your uh, sport shirts, polo shirts, sweat shirts. A lot of times they'll cut holes in it as it's embroidering, especially if it's a pretty dense design. You want to avoid that by using a blunted needle which is the stretch needle okay so it's rounded more on the end of it you can't really see it with your eye 
um, but it actually is. And what it does is instead of cutting through those fibers, it actually pushes those stretchy uh, threads off to the side and allow the embroidery to, you know, get in on that stretchy material without cutting those soft threads, okay? So that's one of the main things I would say. Yes, top stitch needle. When it comes to stabilizers, pretty much keep on hand a good cutaway and a good tear away. You know, so you know if it's something like a shirt or a jacket, sweatshirt, stretchy material, something like that, something that you're going to wear, you'll use your cutaway. But if it's something that's like a hat or a towel, something along that line, you can use your tearaway stabilizer. So there's two options. You basically want to keep on hand as a new embroiderer, definitely those two things. Um, and from that point, your thread that's pretty much about it because there's a couple of different weights of thread but your general embroidery thread will be 40 weight uh, so you don't have to think super hard about that either all right debbie kid says she uses the water soluble stabilizer on her stretchy knits as well now i have heard of someone doing that um so you can give that a shot as well to see if it helps you and it could make for a cleaner look on your um t-shirt or your stretchy fabric miss betty asks, do i have any supplies needles threads no miss betty but what i do have is an amazon affiliate page okay where you can actually order that stuff from amazon and uh, i do have a store um amazon storefront the baby's booty and i do list embroidery supplies there now what i'll have to do is link that in the description of this video afterwards okay because i've been struggling trying to get me back live on um youtube from the mishap earlier so i didn't have an opportunity to put a description under this video but normally under my videos you can actually look at an older one and you'll see that my amazon link is there and you feel free to purchase uh from any of those suggested supplies there in that amazon link if you would like to and if you do click on one of my links then I do get a small kickback, not from you, but your purchase, uh, I am rewarded from Amazon. So you definitely are more than welcome to do that. But me personally, on my website, I don't ship out supplies from my website. Uh, Ant-Man, Ant-Man Anthony, you finally made it to a live stream. Well, welcome. <laughs> Thank you for making it to a live stream. And if I'm not getting the name right, definitely I apologize. I'm on my phone, so the text is a lot smaller than what it is on the computer. I have to have it a little bit bigger on the computer because I'm getting old and getting blind, y'all. Oh, child, I'm trying to tell y'all this sucks. <laughs> Will, as I mentioned before, yes, he sells Sulky Thread on his website. So you're, you're free to definitely go to his website to purchase um sulky thread if that's the thread choice that you would like to make okay so his website is carolina thread box i believe dot com will correct me if i am wrong on that marilyn ray thank you for coming back renee boyd hi dear how are you was finally able to catch me live after several weeks yes you sure are and thank you for joining me maria why do you have the sad face what did i do did i miss something <laughs> Uh, Janet McKinney says, is that the stabilizer you use for soap? From what I understand, that is correct. The one for the lace, where it looks kind of milky. You embroider on the lace on that and then put it on the soap, from what I understand. Yes, it is Ant-Man Anthony. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, you guys. So, thank you for letting me catch up with the chat. Maria, let me know what's going on. I hope I didn't miss a question that you had. I apologize if I did. So, Going back to what we were discussing earlier, onesies was the next topic, if I'm remembering correctly. And onesies is just like your t-shirt jersey knit material. So one thing, first and foremost, you want to use with your onesies is a stretch needle, jersey knit stretch needle. Okay, so you want to use that just like you would with a regular t-shirt to keep from tearing those gentle threads on the baby's onesie that's first and foremost secondly because it is something that's going to go in the wash the baby's going to wear it you want to use cutaway stabilizer because the cutaway helps 
um, stabilize those uh, stitches on the baby's onesie or on t-shirts or whatever you're putting them on, cutaway stabilizer is what you want to use. Now, hooping a baby onesie is a horse of a completely different cover color rather so one of the things uh, a tip that i did find for um in another group which i've seen there's somebody that i think is trying to manufacture it but you can take a tupperware type container or you know the container that um your deli meat or something like that would come in from the grocery store of course after you wash it out really well um, you also can go to Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree has those reusable containers like the Betty Crocker type containers with the red lid on it and it's clear. And you can cut the bottom out of that container and use it inside the onesie to hold that fabric out. And the cup of the container will fit right up under, um, right in here under the head of the embroidery. And it will just do the embroidery inside that cup and do the embroidery on the onesie and hold it holds the fabric out of the way. One of these days, I'll grab one and we'll cut it apart and show you exactly how that works. Um, do a video or something. Or you probably can uh, Google or YouTube search a video for embroidering on a onesie with a container, plastic container, and I'm sure one will pop up. So that's something really popular that I've seen people do to hold those pesky onesies out of the way. And I'm sure that could work for uh, quite a number of other um, applications on the embroidery machine to hold stuff out of the way. Contessa, welcome. Thank you so very much uh, for joining us this evening. Leah says, how do you keep track of what needles are on your four needle machines? Do you change all the needles at one time? I used to have a size 12 standard, but now I have some 14s and a ballpoint. Yes, I generally, if I'm embroidering something on uh, my machine, all right, and it's taking maybe three needles uh, or three different colors, then I'll just change three to ballpoint. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing something and I know all six of my needles um, are going to be on that jersey knit, then I'll change all six. If it's just one color, then I'll only change one. And what I have noticed is with my ballpoint needles, I tend to purchase the stretch needles that are all solid. It's a whole silver looking needle. There's no color band on it, okay? But my regular needles, my top stitch needles, there's a color band. I believe it's like a blue and a light blue is around the top of the needle. So when it's time for me to go embroider something different other than that, where I don't need a stretch needle, I'll see, hey, that's a different needle when I'm going to thread my threads and I'll see that the needle color is different. Now, yes, there have been instances where I've forgotten and you can notice the difference a lot of times when you're doing the embroidery. It's not the end of the world. You just, you know, take the moment to go ahead and change the needle back out. But I could see possibly putting a note somewhere on the screen, like a sticky note up at the top of my screen or something. Somewhere where I'll notice it to say, hey, don't forget to change your needles back. That may be a good idea to do. Uh, but otherwise, yes, I do change the needles that I need to use at one time and then I'll switch them back to my regular top stitch needles. RK Riggs, hello, how are you? Welcome, thank you for joining us this evening. Janet McKinney, you're welcome. Shamina says, are you allowing this group to sell their old babies? And if so, do you mind them commenting? Um, I don't mind a person wanting to sell their old machine. Um, if a person does decide to purchase, I'm not accountable for that. Um, but what I would say is make sure I would really, really, really appreciate it if you would be honest about your machine. If you're having issues with the machine, then I wouldn't sell it. Not in the group. You don't want to do that to your hoop group mates because one thing's for certain, that person will be back in the group and saying, hey, this machine is a dud and that causes issues. I am a drama free group. Drama free free of drama. I don't do drama at all. <laughs> so that's one caveat I would say about selling used equipment. But if you've been using it and it's fine, 
I have no issues with that whatsoever. So yes, I don't mind you saying, hey, I got this machine. I don't use it anymore. If you're wanting to purchase, you're more than welcome to offer it. Marianne, hello. Love you too, my dear. Jennifer H., you say, hey, Eve, almost missed the whole thing. <laughs> Marianne says, thumbs up. If you want to see that onesie trick, I'll definitely do that. I'll definitely do that. And Jennifer H., I'm glad you didn't miss it. Patrick Quinlan says, sorry, your internet is acting up. You'll catch the replay. Have a good evening, Patrick. Um, Tammy Croft says, first time catching me live. Well, thank you. I appreciate you joining us this evening. We are discussing newbies and folks that are new to embroidery and trying to make sure that everyone uh, understands what's going on when it comes to doing embroidery for the first time. Some tips and some tricks of things that is helpful when it comes to doing embroidery. Now, I'm going to check and see if, well, of course not. I was going to see if I still had my list of suggestions, but for some reason, I don't have that up anymore. It's gone. Um, Maria says I have had to switch to your tablet for some reason the keyboard on the laptop locked up and wouldn't let you type anything <laughs> well that was cool you know we could have played charades that would work <laughs> well, i'm glad you can type now look i guess we're all having internet issues or whatever tonight man that this is crazy um i i try really hard to eliminate problems beforehand but as you see, it's not always up to me. So, Miss Tammy, we're definitely going to work to try and uh, make sure that you have what you need uh, to learn your embroidery. Ant-Man Anthony says, I'm having an issue with round lines and so art and so what pro. And then Tammy Cross says, you watched the video last night about to embroider on a hat. Oh, man, you have a lot of fun with that. Um, because hats are or can be a bit of a pain. So make sure you're using an unstructured hat because those are a lot friendlier to our embroidery machine and also invest in a top stitch needle as well. If you can, if not, use what you got, okay? Definitely go ahead with what you have. You may experience some thread breakage, but please be patient because hats are finicky and usually, oh, you say you already did it, that's what's up okay <laughs> well for those that are new this is another new trick okay so when you're embroidering on hats you want to um, <laughs> she says she couldn't find an emoji for a keyboard that's cute <laughs> i don't know is there an emoji for a keyboard i don't even know man you know you old when you don't feel like digging through emojis to try and find a specific emoji because I'm like that all the time. I like use maybe the main 10, 12 emojis and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't even know if there is one for a keyboard. That's hilarious. Um, but when it comes to doing hats, I will say that hats uh, are tearaway stabilizer. They take a lot of patience. A lot of patience to embroider on a hat all right and you want to try and find embroidery designs that are made for hats all right people don't realize that hats have a specific embroidery design element that should be there for them so hats generally stitch from the inside out right so what happens is if your hat says I'm happy, then it'll start in the middle with one of the A's and stitch out this way, and then it'll go back and stitch out the rest of the word that way. And what it does is it helps keep the surface of the hat uniform so that um, if it embroiders left to right, like we read, then what it'll, or right to left, backwards, it could even do that. But if it goes all in one direction, then a lot of times the fabric tends to shift and you'll get buckled in your embroidery. So that is why hats have a specific uh, element to the design for their embroidery, all right? So you can uh, purchase a regular design and embroider it on a hat, uh, but keep in mind you do risk having some buckling to it or wrinkling to it because that design may not uh, be conducive to embroidering on the surface of a hat. And if you can slow the machine down, um, as was just mentioned by Miss Debbie Kidd, then definitely do that, all right? So I don't um, have a means of slowing down my embroidery machine on that 4x4, but I don't know. I think the 770, you can slow it down. I'm not 100% sure. Will probably can answer that better than I can. 
Um, but on my larger machine, yes, I can slow it down. And Maria, don't feel bad. That's something that's pretty difficult to tackle um, if you haven't done it yet. It's not hard to do, but it does take a little bit of extra patience in order to do hats. Probably about the same amount of patience it takes to do a onesie. <laughs> probably about the same amount okay so will says you can turn your stitches per minute down on the um 770 and will also taught me a trick where you can hold the green button down even on this machine and slow it down but it slows it like way down and i don't really want to stitch that slow maris rios hello how are you welcome thank you for joining us this evening i appreciate you coming in Linda L. asked, how do I know when to get my embroidery machine serviced? Well, that depends on how to, um, how often rather you do embroidery, okay? So if you're embroidering on things every day uh, and all day, what I generally suggest is have your embroidery machine serviced at least once a year, okay? Now, if you are embroidering uh, that much, then there are some basic things that you can do to keep your embroidery machine clean out yourself. Now, I don't know what type of embroidery machine you may have, but definitely check your manual and see what cleaning uh, suggestions it has for you. If you have a machine similar to this one, the 4x4 Brother, I do have a couple of maintenance videos out on YouTube that you're free to look at, and it'll show you how to take apart certain things with the embroidery machine uh, to learn how to fix some of those, you know, irritating problems or at least get to where the problem may be. So you can check that out. Uh, but for the most part, mainly check your bobbin area. So when it's time for you to clean your bobbin, so this one is a top load bobbin. So you'll pull the bobbin out like this. Look down in there when you take that bobbin out and look at how dirty it may or may not be down there. You definitely want to keep that cleaned out. That's with any embroidery machine or uh, with the rotary hook on the bobbin where it goes in the front, pull that out and check that area in there to see how dirty it is. You can use a vacuum cleaner with a small like keyboard attachment to vacuum out any of that extra lint and gunk that gets down in there. That's one of the main things you can do to help keep your embroidery machine running, you know, smoothly because the that's a lot of friction going on to put that design on an outfit that is actually a lot more embroidery or i'm sorry sewing than it is with a regular sewing machine because usually your sewing machine you're just doing a straight stitch all right and so once you go around that's pretty much it but that's a lot of stitching in one area so it sheds a lot which is why you should be using embroidery thread in your embroidery machine yes you can you can embroider with regular thread. You can do it. Do I suggest it? No, not any way, shape, form, or fashion. Please don't do that. The reason why I say that is because cotton thread, if it's not made for embroidery, there is a cotton embroidery thread, but it's rare to find it. Like I know one place that sells cotton embroidery thread, but they treat the thread to make sure that it doesn't shed in your machine. But regular embroidery, I mean, regular sewing thread at the store, especially if it's cotton, it has fuzz off of it. If you look at, put two and two together side by side, you'll see that the fuzzy is a little bit fuzzier than embroidery thread. Well, all that extra hair will shed off into the machine and gunk it up a lot faster, okay? So please don't use regular sewing thread in your embroidery machine, all right? That's one of my main tips that I like to tell people because there's a misconception that that's okay to embroider that. All right. So let me see. Hopefully I didn't skip anything else. So again, with servicing your machine, if you use it a whole lot, then look to get your machine serviced more frequently. If you don't embroider a lot, like maybe you'll embroider something maybe once a day um every other day type situation well then you can go a little bit longer in between your service uh calls so maybe once a year instead of uh once every six months or something like that tammy croft says you did a simple monogram well congratulations on that monograms are a lot of fun and actually that's one of the most popular things you can do with embroidery uh with an embroidery machine is a monogram Monograms on hats, monograms on jackets, 
uh, that again is one of the easiest things to do so if you wanted to get into doing towels i would definitely suggest trying to monogram a towel first you know like i said get one from dollar tree and give it a shot to see how you like it um tammy says your brave a onesie was your first project attempt <laughs> that's that's fine look i don't have a problem with going on and diving into the deep end that's not an issue because at least that's something you can say that you've done and you were successful at it because there are some folks who still haven't ch attempted a onesie because they're afraid that it's not going to work out. And we really need to do a video on a onesie. We haven't done that yet. So we'll try and uh, combine the plastic container thing with doing a onesie at the same time. See if we can't do that. Mar Maris, you're welcome. And hopefully I'm saying that correctly. Tara says, I have an old Ber Bernina Deco 600. Can you do a tutorial on downloading on a card to use on this machine i don't have a bernina so it'd be a little bit difficult to do a tutorial on how to download to the card now there's basic download information and i do have a video on how to uh get a design from off of the internet download it to your computer and how to use so what pro to transfer it to uh external media whether it be a flash drive or possibly a card something along those uh, lines. So definitely check that video out. Um, I would definitely do a search on YouTube, The Baby's Booty, and search for um, downloading designs or how to uh, get designs from for your embroidery machine. So check that out. I do have a video on that. Shamina says, you took some excellent notes tonight. Thanks for not giving up on the live. <laughs> Professor Eve, thank you. I appreciate that. I don't like to give up. I try and keep going uh, because I know there's a lot of folks that look forward to having their questions answered, you know, and that's the whole point in what we do on our live is answer questions. Tanya York, hello from Minnesota. Welcome. We haven't had you in here before. We appreciate you joining us live. Tanya has the Bernina 880 plus. Congratulations on your baby. And the Bernina seems to be a pretty decent machine. So I'm uh, looking forward to seeing some of the projects you've been working on on your Bernina. If you are not a part of the Hoop Group, you guys, you're more than welcome to enjoy um, to join our embroidery Hoop Group. Okay, our embroidery. Hoop group is on my website, www.thebabiesbooty.com. And you can click on join the hoop group up at the top. And in that group, we discuss sales. We discuss if you're having issues and try and get you some help. We have a lot of experienced folks in there. So if you want to ask a question or if you just want to show off some of the projects you've been working on lately, you're free to do that in the Hoop Group. So definitely click on Join the Hoop Group, and we would love to have you there. Maria says you were in the dollar section of Target. They had the cutest makeup bags that you can embroider on. They were $3. I embroidered names on them. Very nice for gifts. We do need to do an updated uh, embroidery blank video we haven't had one in a while and so for those of you who are new embroidery blanks is what uh you would find things to embroider on so this headband could be considered an embroidery blank because it would be blank there wouldn't be anything on it so that's why it's called an embroidery blank t-shirts embroidery blanks hats are considered embroidery blanks um bags pocketbooks embroidery blanks so there's quite a few options of embroidery blanks out there that are affordable that you can have some fun with like for instance at dollar tree the dollar tree pot holders the squares that uh are there that you would use to pull pots of course out of the stove or whatever with those you can use as embroidery blanks just put some cutaway on the back or in some instances tear away is fine as well and embroider something pretty simple or snazzy on it like mom's kitchen or janet's kitchen if it's for a friend and you can embroider on it and give it to them it's really easy super super easy to do candia hainsworth has a step-by-step -step video on how to do that so definitely check that out uh it's a pot holder tutorial that's a simple blank dollar tree has towels walmart has towels there's a lot of different things 
that you can use to embroider on and make money. And I'm talking about even these smaller four by four machines. There's a lot of opportunities out there with embroidery blanks that you can use to make money. All right, so we do need to go ahead and do a video on that. You're welcome, Miss Linda. Miss Sylvia asks, do we have to change the needle in every embroidery that we do? Well, when you do an embroidery project, it is suggested by manufacturers that you change your needle with every project that you do, all right? Because there's a lot of times, like for instance, embroidering on a pot holder is kind of thick. So there's a higher chance that you could bend the needle while working on uh, a project of that weight. But the thing is, I'm lazy and I don't always remember to change my needle with every project. So if you don't, it won't destroy anything in most instances. It'll just, sometimes when you're having issues with your embroidery, you embroider one project, everything was great. Now you're doing this one and there's issues change your needle a lot of times that's where your problem is coming from and you don't realize it so work on getting that needle switched and if you do have the resources to change out your needle with every project then go ahead and do so one thing's for certain it will help make sure that each project is crisp but if you can't and if you don't it won't be the end of the world all right but it is suggested that you change your needle with every project that you do. <laughs> Tara Phelps, you're welcome. Linda says, do you have a set time for a live show, Miss Linda? It is Sundays at 8 p.m. as Miss Ronnie's wraps pointed out. So generally I am here on Sundays around 8 p.m. Sometimes a little bit late like I was tonight at 8.05, but I try to make sure that I'm in here by eight. Tammy Croft, is there a certain thread that you prefer? Well. I do prefer Madeira thread. Uh, Madeira is a brand of thread that uh, is German in base, but they are here in the U.S. And fortunately for me, I do have a Madeira warehouse really close to my home where I can just jazz over there, grab me some thread, and come right back. And it's very affordable to purchase it there as opposed to being five times more expensive if I go and purchase it from Joann's Fabrics or from a, another fabric dealer. So I do purchase my Madeira thread locally um, and I haven't had any issues out of my Madeira, th Madeira thread either. Now there is another thread that I do use and it's sulky mainly because I was uh, a part of the subscription box and I have some sulky thread Sulky Thread is some good thread too. And Will with Carolina Thread Place sells it. So it is available on his website if you would like to purchase thread from him uh, and have it shipped to you. So there's a couple of different options um, at Joann's Fabrics. Um, I'm trying to think of the name of that thread. I don't think it's Robinson Anton that's at Joann's. There is one that I've been known to use. And I think it's Sulky. Pretty sure it's Sulky at Joann's. I've been known to purchase that as well from time to time when I was desperate and couldn't get a hold to uh, my Madeira place because it would have been closed or after hours or something like that. Um, Yun Bistopher, hi, quick question. Can anyone point me to a brand that sells the right embroidery hoops for the PE 800? Bought one brand, but false advertised for the machine that you have. Um, I do have a list on Amazon and you know what? I actually haven't looked at the uh, actual PE 800. I probably should before I make a suggestion about the hoops. Um, but the PE 800 would be the updated version of the 770. And if that's the case, there should only be like a two by two size hoop a four by four size hoop, a five by seven size hoop, and there's also a option of a um, five by roughly 12 size hoop. I'm sorry, let me plug up my phone before my battery dies. I didn't realize that I didn't have this thing plugged up. And forgive my messy desk in the background behind me. Uh, but there should only be like four hoop sizes available for your machine so you may have bought the right hoop and it could be the repositional hoop 
and you not realize it um, and need to learn how to use that. But we'll look into that and uh, see about getting that information to you. If you're in the Hoop group, shoot me a message uh, to remind me to look that information up. If you're not in the Hoop group, shoot me an email. It's thebabiesbooty at gmail.com, all right? And you can go to my website, thebabiesbooty.com, and get me an email that way, too. Maria says, try doing a monogram on table napkins and then advance to towels. I also try to do diapers or bibs and then progress to onesies. So that's a good suggestion uh, of some things that you can do to start out with that's a lot simpler than the harder option. Okay, so Sheila Cushionberry says that you've been told the hoops that fit the 770 should fit the exact same machine. So I'm glad you guys um, were able to uh, recommend that stuff to him because that's it is in my list on Amazon then. So if I have a list and it says 5 by 7 then it should fit your machine. Wendy, Wendy Waldenberg, hi from Washington State. Welcome from the West Coast. Thank you for joining us this evening. Patricia Mills. Hi, how are you? Welcome. We appreciate you coming back with us. Hello, family. It's been a long time, but I think I need to step in on this tonight. I know how you doing, Eve. God bless and God bless to everyone else tonight. You've been watching every week, though, as much as you can, and we appreciate you doing that with us. We love having you here and always giving your input uh, and saying hi. Thank you very much for that. Miss Sylvia says, can you use sticky stabilizer for hats? You can. You definitely can, uh, especially if it's the flatbed single needle. So you just, you know, push it down, help it lay flat, and that will also help hold the hat down. So yes, you can do that. Rashonda from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. Yun says, I bought the Hema Pro set and only one out of the four hoops fit for me. Uh-oh, so we definitely need to try and get that correct information to you. Will at Carolina Thread Place says that his Sulky Thread is 20% off of the thread on his website. So definitely check that out. Oh, I'm sorry, 20% off the thread, which is off the regular retail price. That's what the price is on his website. Um, Will says Gutterman and Coates and Clark. Now, I have used Coates and Clark. That doesn't always play well on my multi-needle, but my 4x4, not an issue with the Coates and Clark thread. Um, thank you, Will, for posting that uh, <laughs> link. And Miss Sylvia found a keyboard emoji. That is hilarious. Um, Linda mentioned that is the Thread Nanny Hoops. That is another different uh, manufacturer that I have seen on line so let me go here sheila says i have trouble winding a bobbin with a larger spool of thread how do you do yours all right so um i wind my bobbins here on my four by four machine and what i have done is if there's a larger spool such as like this there's a couple of things you can do um one trick that I saw online is set this in a teacup and then when you run now this is um serger thread not embroidery thread so I'm just using this as an illustration but you set it in the cup and when it comes up then you run it uh across the top of the machine over to the silver where you thread it and mm -hmm. wind it that way so you would set it like right here behind your machine but right just off to the side of this silver where you start to thread your machine now it also is helpful to just get a thread stand there's a simple thread stand i know there's one at walmart uh for nine dollars i have one on my sewing machine that i keep on my sewing machine uh, and that is a plastic one i hate it with every ounce of everything i have in me because the plastic of the pole that goes up that plastic part is el cheapo and it bends and flexes so i'm eventually going to change that out to the kind where it's a metal pole that goes up instead of the plastic and that's really frustrating um but they also have multi-thread stands that you can purchase on amazon as well and you can set that behind the machine thread it up and then from the top part of the 
uh, thread stand over to your machine is an easy way to have that uh, holding your thread while you wind your bobbin. Maria, can I mention about the embroidery fair coming up next week? Yes, I can. Again, the uh, embroidery everything mart is coming to Greenville, South Carolina next week. Embroidery everything mart. So they will have uh, vendors there that sell embroidery blanks. They will have thread vendors. So people who sell thread companies rather that sell thread companies. That, oh, and it's vinyl as well. So there'll be vinyl vendors there. Um, anything having to do with embroidery or vinyl, they'll also have classes there. The classes roughly are about $8 a piece. I had intended to sign up to teach Sew It Pro, but time got away from me and did not do that. So unfortunately, they don't have a Sew It Pro class uh, going on there last time I checked. Um, but they do have a lot that's going to be available for those who want to get into embroidery. And it's, again, in Greenville, South Carolina. Right now, the tickets are $24 a piece, and that is for both days. It's Thursday and Friday, the 21st and the 22nd of February. So that's next Thursday, this coming, rather, Thursday and Friday uh, in Greenville, South Carolina. And it is my wholehearted intention to be there both days. I know Mr. Lowry was making plans to be there with me, but we've had some scheduling conflicts so I don't think he'll be able to make it there with me. Not 100% sure on that just yet. Um, but that is this coming Thursday and Friday in Greenville, South Carolina. So uh, Ronnie's Raps mentioned something that's really cool. Joanne sells Robinson Anton in their gallery and Sulky and Goodman in the store. It's expensive, so make sure you have coupons. And that is definitely something I would suggest. Make sure that you do have a coupon for that charlotte villa says hi again from alabama hello charlotte how are you <laughs> um eddie jr also mentioned the coats and clark sin hey miss cynthia how are you welcome welcome good to have you back in here with us um let me see let me see let me see eddie jr says hobby lobby currently sells soology made in europe or something <laughs> not sure if it's rebranded all right, so thank you for that suggestion. And yes, Embroidex, Yun, I definitely, just about anything Embroidex, I love it on uh, Amazon. Uh, Debbie Kidd also mentioned her machine doesn't like Coates and Clark either, especially the multi-needles. I don't know why the multi-needles hate the Coates and Clark thread, but it does. Uh, Trina, have you ever had any issues removing sticky stabilizer from the back of your towels? If so, what did you use to remove it without ruining your towels? Well, I don't use the sticky stabilizer on the back of the towels, uh, mainly for that reason, because it'll pull the nap when you go to try to pull it away. So if there's something that you're wanting to, um, if you're wanting to hold the towel in place, then don't use sticky stabilizer. Uh, and I need to show this because I was just telling somebody about it today. Use something like the 4x4 adhesive spray. This 4x4 is, says ruler grip, but where is it on here? There is some information on this can that says that it will work with needles. I think this is the right one anyway. And y'all look, I am getting blind and I'm having to <laughs> pull it away so that I can see it. Okay, well, maybe it's not this can. Maybe it's the green one, 505. There's a 404 and there's a 505. And one of them says that it is safe for needles. And that's the one that you want to use with your needles. Um, so use this. And when, no matter, you know, what you're using, you make sure that you do just a really quick spray, something like that. Don't just, you know what I'm saying? That's overkill and it's not necessary just a really light burst of glue on your stabilizer will hold your item in place all right so use that instead of sticky stabilizer for your towels because you don't want the towel to you don't want to pull that nap uh and mess up the nap on the back of your towel so i don't use that um Miss Sylvia says, nice to know about threads. I did it on your new baby. Got to get a name for your new machine. Anyone knows what any name but Maria? <laughs> you don't like the Maria name for your baby? You probably had your other baby's name might have been, or either Maria was the uh, storm that came through. Now that I think about it. You're welcome, Miss Sheila. 
Shamina says, what needle would you use for a leather and wool letterman's jacket? And what weight is your serger thread? I don't know what weight my serger thread is. Actually, that thread was given to me. So I don't know what weight it is. Um, and generally, when I purchase serger thread, I don't really notice the weight of it. Um, I just know that it says serger thread. And that's the reason being, I don't use my serger very much at all, actually. I think I might have used it five or six times. Um, so I don't really know what the weight is. I apologize. Um, but the wool and letterman's jacket, usually because that's thicker, I would just continue to stick with that 9014 needle. Um, the only problem is with leather, it can put some pretty sizable holes in it uh, because of the size of the needle. I mean, and it's just a minuscule difference between uh, the 9014 and the 7511 just by laying them side by side and looking at the size of the needle. So it may be uh, a minor um, difference in, in the size of the hole. You could give a 7511 an opportunity to do that embroidery for you uh, because it is so small. It might, you know, work okay and be heavy enough to keep from breaking a needle. But again, my uh, 9014 I've been using for some of everything. I have been embroidering on some pretty thick jackets, but I haven't done leather with it yet. Um, and I did actually get a hold to some leather and we have some projects coming up that we'll be doing with the leather. Uh, so I'll be able to tell you firsthand here shortly what needle works the best with the leather. But these projects are not jackets and I'm really excited about them. They're in the hoop projects that we have coming up. So, uh, but for right now, um, give your 7511 a shot with that jacket, the leather one anyway, and see how it works. But for the wool, 9014 should be okay. Linda says a good place to purchase glitter vinyl. Glitter vinyl, um, you can get some from designsbylittlebee.com online, but online is the only place, all right? So designsbylittlebee.com and um, M-I-K-R-I-World.com, I think. Just Google, actually. Google M-I-K-R-I-World. Mikri World, I think is what it's called. Google them. They have a great big selection of embroidery, glitter, vinyl, and my punk embroidery. Google them as well. They have a big selection of uh, glitter, vinyl. Yun says you're starting to see your machine doesn't like Coates and Clark. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, Maria, you're welcome. Marianne says your punk broidery. Again, yes, definitely that. Uh, Lillian, Lillian, I, I'm sorry, Lillian. Hi, Eve. I have a new Janome MB7. Her name is Sweetie. So guess what we need to do for Sweetie? We need to ring the bell for Sweetie. <laughs> machine tell sweetie welcome to the family to the hoop group and definitely be sure to share some of the pictures of the work that you'll be doing with sweetie congratulations my ma'am for your janome mb7 lots of fun lots of fun uh will says his he1 hates coats and clark so yeah coats and clark is a rough thread for a lot of machines <laughs> maria say what's wrong with maria that's hilarious um Miss Sylvia, you love the group because we learn every time. We definitely want to try and teach and make sure folks uh, can learn and understand what to do. April, can you sew with your embroidery thread? You most certainly can. I do it all the time, especially when I'm working on a project and I can't find a thread in the color, specific color that I want because this is my actual sewing thread rack here. So... As you see, that's way smaller than my embroidery thread rack. So I have a way bigger collection of colors over here in embroidery than I do in sewing. So if I need something that's a specific color, you best believe I will sew with my embroidery thread. But I don't do the other way around. I do not embroider with that thread at all because I don't want to damage my machine. Sheila Cushionberry says the 505 spray, sweet. I knew it was one of them. It was either the 404 or the 505. Thank you guys for letting me know that. Gwen says, finally bought a PE800. Thinking of a fancy name for her. So, Gwen McKinley, we need to ring the bell for your baby then. <laughs> Congratulations! Ooh, PE800. Holler! <laughs> Yay! 
Hey, that's a color screen, isn't it? If I'm remembering correctly. Congratulations on your PE 800 and you as well. Please be sure to share your projects with us of what you've been working with. So again, before uh, I go any further with the chat, if you are not a part of the hoop group, okay, for those who are new to embroidery or new to this channel, we do have a hoop group, okay? For those who love to embroider um, anything dealing with embroidery, we do have a group at thebabiesbooty.com where you can click and join the hoop group and you can share your projects that you've been working on, pictures of your projects. You also can ask questions and we also try and share sales and things like that um, that are going on in the field of embroidery. So definitely check us out at thebabiesbooty.com if you would like to. Also, if you're enjoying the live so far, please take a moment and give us a thumbs up on this video. It lets YouTube know that you enjoy the content and it also helps me know that I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing <laughs> and teaching you guys and keeping you entertained, all right? So if you uh, are on your mobile device, you can click on live chat up under the video and it will take your live chat away and you'll see the thumbs up symbol there. If you tag that and then hit live chat again, you'll come right back into the chat and continue to see what all the lovely people are saying in the chat. And we definitely appreciate it. Miss Deborah says you use wet and gone that you dampen with a sponge and you wet the back after and it releases wonderfully. So wet and gone is another type of uh, stabilizer that you can use. Very similar to um, uh, water soluble stabilizer is another name for it, but it's not that super clear water soluble stabilizer that I was showing before. It's not this one. Uh, the one that she's referring to is the one that's a little bit clearer. I mean, a little bit uh, milkier in color like this. This is the one that would be wet and gone and it will disappear once you put water to it. Um, Marilyn Ray says her PE 800 is called Henrietta. Well, you tell Henrietta that we says hello and hopefully she will behave and uh, sew out some beautiful things for you. Let us see. Let us see. I am going through the chat and making sure that I'm not missing anything. Uh, Sheila Cushionberry, you finally named your PE 800. You got a Christmas and named her Hope. That's actually a beautiful name. <laughs> Jazzy Black says, is there... Oh, well, welcome, Jazzy Black. Thank you for joining us this evening. Is there an alternative to the Twilly you use in the Letterman patches? I looked on the website, but the shipping was pretty high yeah their shipping is a little steep but it's well worth it all right it is well worth it and the reason why i say that is because you can go to um joanne's fabrics and crafts and there's a material back there called uh duck canvas i believe and i can show you real quick what that looks like this is the duck canvas right here so it's a canvas and it's um, pretty thick and it's got a pretty tight weave to it. And as you see, it stitches beautifully, okay? But this is a really light design. This is really light. I mean, so you can even see that it's made that way to be super light. A patch usually is a lot uh, more dense, especially if you do the tight patches that I do on a regular basis. The patches that I do regularly are super dense, okay? And let me grab a few of these to show you exactly what I mean, all right? So there's a couple of ways. Now, you could actually use uh, this for doing those lettering patches, but the look won't be the same. And that's the other thing why that fabric is better uh, to do for the twill patches because there's... Is, is a certain look to it that it's smooth it's a smoother um feel and appearance on the jacket you can use that other stuff i don't want to say that you can't you can uh but this is you know the more professional choice i think that's the better word that i'm trying to say but if you're wanting to make patches you want something super sturdy super stable because what will happen is when you're doing patches the patches will warp on you if you're using something like that 
uh, duck canvas, the blue duck canvas. I've done patches where the patch was supposed to be round and it ended up being oval and uh, or like see how this one is kind of warped a little bit. That's because the material that I embroidered this on just wasn't strong enough to support all of these stitches that's in this patch. Now with this material, I actually used Badge Master to make this and it, it didn't support the stitches very well at all. Here is another example of um, that actual twill fabric with a patch and it's kind of like flimsy on the edge, uh, so to speak. So, you know, it's there's reasons behind the madness of using certain things. And unfortunately, because the manufacturers know that you it's the best stuff to use well they charge a little more uh to either get that to you or to uh for you to purchase it so that's why um it is a little bit higher but to offset that you could possibly buy you know a couple of different colors um and it'll make the shipping a little bit worth it but i apologize for that even though i have nothing to do with it um it can get quite pricey trying to do certain things in embroidery but that um duck canvas is available in my joann's fabrics and crafts it's at the very back of the store all on one rack um, when you go in just ask them for duck canvas all right um maria says another thing for cotton fabric give it a good ironing with spray starch prior to embroidering that would be correct thank you will for uh the link to micro world Miss Sylvia says your godchild says to call it Sheila or your godchild's name is Sheila. <laughs> That's a pretty name. You're welcome, Lillian. Sheila Cushionberry says, hopefully it doesn't take you two months to name your vinyl cutter that's coming Tuesday. <laughs> well, remind me next week to ring the bell for your vinyl cutter. Miss Cynthia says, since you last talked with me, you sold your 770 and bought a new baby? No name yet? That's okay. Well, then that means we need to ring the bell for your new baby. What did you get? <laughs> because we want to ring the bell for the and let folks know the model of what you did receive. That's awesome. Maria says, Micro World is great. Their prices are good and their response is fast. Yes, it is. I know, Will. My gosh, the bell really hadn't had an opportunity to rest tonight. We've been ringing from the start and that's a good thing. I'm actually quite proud of everyone because it is a lot of fun to get new babies. Tammy says, any tips on the automatic threader on the Brother PE770? Mine won't thread most of the time. I think that would be a good question for Will actually and sometimes it could be your needle make sure that your needle is inserted all the way because i know on that thing there if i don't have the needle pushed all the way up it kind of is off it's not aligned correctly for that to go in effortlessly and come back out so see if that might be the problem but i have now that is one complaint now if i've ever heard of an of an of a complaint with the brother home machines that would be it, the automatic threader breaking, okay? That's about the only complaint I've ever heard with those machines uh, that's consistent. Miss Charlotte says, have you sewn with the Teflon needles while doing general sewing using Wonder Under? I have not, but the Teflon needles work just as well and last longer than your basic needle, so it wouldn't be an issue to embroider with it at all. Gwen says patches would work better on leather. I have used leather, not genuine leather, but pleather leather. And my um, results weren't really consistent on using that. I know I, the one that I did use, it stretched. And then I have another one that didn't stretch. It was a different type though. So, um, but with this Twilly, consistent all the way across the board, no issues whatsoever out of that twilly and i've gotten some really great patch sew outs with that ant man anthony oh by the way i have a single for Tura, and i love it so much that is an awesome uh machine for a lot of folks mr ant man so definitely make sure that you share the images of the wonderful things that you and your singer for Tura are uh working on uh-oh, Miss Cynthia, the website wouldn't let you sign up for the Hoop Group. 
when did you sign up for it? Was it recent or has it always been that way? Because one other person was having issues too. And I'm not sure what the problem was. I have to go back and double check her email to see what the problem actually ended up being. Uh, because I went to go see she said that she had registered before but it wouldn't let her back in or something um but when i went to look i didn't see her in there at all so i'm not sure um i'll have to check to see what the issue was but email me and we'll see if we can't figure that out patricia says if you know what i want to mention i've had my brother se 625 for a while but now a year and a half but you want bigger well that's a good thing there's nothing wrong with upgrading uh i did so uh, you definitely can look into doing that. One thing's for certain, if you can afford to do so, I suggest retaining the old machine. And the reason why I say that is because if something happens with the new one, say if it has to go in the shop, well, you'll have a backup. Or if you have two different projects, you can have two machines going at one time. So if you can afford to do so, retain your old machine as well. Aisha says, good night. I did a digitizing job of a logo to embroider on a t-shirt and a hat. How much can I charge to embroider and digitize the logo? Well, that's entirely up to you, dear. A lot of it depends on how um, complicated the design was to digitize. I know for myself, um, a lot of the base price uh, can range from $15 to $25. Um, and if it's very complex, I actually don't digitize it at all. I farm it out to someone else uh, because a lot of times it takes a whole heck of a lot longer than what I want to be bothered with. Okay, so um, a lot of that is up to you. If you have um, it sourced out, then you can just pass that cost on to the customer. And then, of course, your embroidery is priced based generally on stitch count is how I charge for my embroidery. And that's another really good point for the new embroiderers in here. For those that are just getting into embroidery, you've never done embroidery, and eventually you want to sell. One of the things that we look at charging for embroidery is based on the stitch count, okay? So if you get a design from off the internet and say it's 500 stitches with something that low of a stitch count, it's probably just one letter, <laughs> like a monogram, a small one at that. Well, 500 stitch count, we generally charge a dollar per thousand, okay? So actually a 500 stitch count letter wasn't a good reference, but... Um, if it's a dollar per stitch count, then 500 is under a dollar. So it would be a dollar for that one letter, right? But a dollar isn't a way to make money, is it? So you have to set a minimum price of what you will charge for anything, all right? So keep that in mind. You should have a minimum charge for anything that you embroider, no matter what it is, all right? So Say, for instance, you have someone that comes in and they just want uh, one letter monogrammed on a towel, okay? And it is only, say, 2,000 stitches. That's $2. Well, that's not really going to be beneficial to your business to take the time, uh, find the letter, get the letter loaded in the machine, do your stabilizer, mark the place on the towel where it's going to go. I mean, you have to get paid for the work and all of that prep work that you're doing. So that's why we suggest a minimum. All right, and the minimum is entirely up to you. It can range anywhere from, you know, $8 to $10 to $15. I've even heard that you can't walk into this one particular shop without ordering something if it ain't $40. They, they only do a minimum of $40 worth of work no matter what it is that you want, okay? So um, you have to figure out what your minimum is going to be. Once you get your minimum, then your embroidery price just goes up from there, okay? So say, for instance, my minimum is $10. Anytime anyone comes in my shop, no matter what it is, it's $10. But they want to get a uh, patch made, and the patch is 45,000 stitches, okay? Well, we do a dollar per thousand, roughly, okay? You can even charge a dollar twenty-five per thousand. I've, I've heard it go up to $2 per thousand, but that's entirely up to you how you want to charge for your embroidery services. And some people have a flat fee. Like I know one place locally, if you get a hat embroidered, it's $8. It's just, that's all they'll charge to do a hat. But I'm pretty sure they'll charge more if it's more complicated than that. But at any rate, 
45,000 stitches, a dollar per thousand would be $45 to embroider whatever that is. Your minimum is 10, so your minimum has already been met and the 45, you know, it's 35 over what your minimum is. So that's pretty much how we judge uh, how much to charge for embroidery. Now, there are certain folks in here like Miss Debbie Kidd. She has a business that she's been running for quite some time. Her method of charging would probably be a little bit different than that. Um, that's a basic rule of thumb that I suggest. But there are other ways of charging for your embroidery services. And I've um, offered or I have shown lists several times of how much other areas, uh, other companies in the area are charging for their embroidery services. And you'd be surprised at how similar some are and how vastly different others are. All right. So charging for embroidery is pretty important part of trying to figure out how to make money. Of course, that's probably if you're new to embroidery, probably something you're not thinking about till way on down the road, but it's good to go ahead and get that thought process in mind. All right. Because one thing's for certain, when you go get a regular nine to five job, there's going to be a minimum uh, wage that you're going to make. Okay. Sometimes like in Charlotte, our minimum wage is $7 and 25 cents is horrible. As that sounds, that's what it is. So if I'm going to be doing embroidery and I'm only charging $5 to embroider something, um, you know, I'm still making pretty good because it's probably not going to take me an hour to do whatever it is, but I want to make my minimum and that's entirely up to you what you make. Okay. So I'm going to get off of that soapbox and get back to the chat and make sure that I answered that question. Um, but charging to embroider and digitize, I charge for the digitizing and they pay for that first. All right. So if it's $15, okay, well, it's going to be $15 to digitize that logo. I need that paid. Thank you very much. I appreciate it before I digitize anything. All right. So once they pay for it, I digitize it. Here is your digitized logo. They approve it. They can see what it looks like because my digitizing software program has a way for me to take a picture of it and send it to them. Um, once I get their approval and the size and everything correct the way they want it, um, and that is $15 per size, all right, in digitizing. Because simply uh, enlarging a logo is not an option with my digitizing i digitize at the size that they request so if they want it larger or smaller that's a completely different digitizing and i do start it over from scratch that's me personally um you have the choice to do however you wish but 15 dollars per size pay for in advance once it's digitized and they're ready to put it on whatever they want it on then they pay per stitch count so if it's a fifty thousand stitch count image that I just digitized for them, then it's $50 to embroider that on whatever it is that they want that design to go on. If they order in bulk, so say for instance, they want a hundred hats, I may work out a deal with them. It may not be $50 per hat. Uh, I may work out a better deal, but that's entirely up to you how you wish to do that service for you and your customers and your business. Okay. I'm not going to tell you how to price your business. Um, only offer suggestions. Can you use the 505 spray as a substitute instead of stabilizer spray? Y'all gonna make me a pro. <laughs> 505 spray, um, yes, you can use that if you're trying to float something, okay? That's pretty much the only reason why you would use that spray. Um, so you don't want to use sticky stabilizer. You just want to use regular stabilizer. Then you would use the 505 spray, just a quick spritz of it to hold your project in place. Yes, you can use that just make sure the can says that it is friendly to a sewing needle ant man anthony says you need a suggestion for your embroidery machine he is open to suggestions as well if you haven't already said that in the chat for him and i haven't gotten to it yet candace smith hey how are you haven't been on in a while but you are awesome thank you very much i appreciate that and welcome back to our chat. I'm on a little bit later than what I normally am because we were having technical difficulties earlier. Will says, everyone have a wonderful night. He has to be up at 4 a.m. See you guys Friday during his live. Have a great night, Will. Sorry about going overtime. Have a great night, all right? And Will does go live on Fridays at 8 p.m. And on his channel, he covers embroidery, 
Um, he also covers some things with vinyl, sublimation, quite a few things, actually. So Will is on Friday nights. If you would like to join him there, please do. Rebecca Ricketts, hello. How are you? First time chatting. Thank you. I just bought Janome Memory Crab 12,000. Need a name. I really enjoy learning with you. Thank you. You are welcome. So let's ring the bell for your Janome Memory Crab 12,000. <laughs> Congratulations, Miss Rebecca. Congratulations on your new baby. <laughs> welcome to the family. We really appreciate you letting us know. And please, if you get a moment and join the Hoop Group, Please share images of the wonderful projects that you and your baby stitch out. And man, Anthony asks, do I need the Twilly you used in the Letterman jacket for any other jacket, like on a windbreaker? Well, the Twilly that I used is for the uh, Letterman look patch, okay? So if you're not trying to do the Letterman look patch, then you don't have to use this. That's mainly what this is for. I don't really use it for too much else other than making patches, okay? So... Making patches and this Letterman look because uh, the authentic Letterman letters are made with Chanel patches, all right? And you have to have a Chanel machine in order to make your own Chanel patches. And I don't have a Chanel machine. So that's why we're going with the uh, off-brand, so to speak, look <laughs> of the Letterman patches, all right? So that's what this is mainly for uh, and for making patches. So if you're not making patches or trying to do that Letterman look, you don't have to use the Twilly. Not at all. Charlotte Villa says the nine stick needles are called Schmidt nine stick used with fusible stabilizer. That would be great and correct. And you can use that without any issues. Diana Henderson. Hello. How are you? I used a metal coat hanger and cut it to make a thread stand. Hot glued it to an empty, empty vegetable can. Then, uh... Covered with fabric, put spool inside of the can. Now, that's what I call being innovative and making your own way work. That's a MacGyver type stuff right there. So that's a good thing. If it works for you, that's awesome. Great suggestion. Um, and if anyone would like to try it, I'm sure it could work because a metal coat hanger does have the smooth uh, edge. That's the main thing. You don't want that thread to get caught on anything and get your... Uh, thread tangled up and breaking on you. Miss Cynthia says it's a BL Destiny 2. Well, let's ring the bell for your BL Destiny 2. <laughs> Baby lock in the house. <laughs> Congratulations, Miss Cynthia, on your new baby. I am happy for you, ma'am. And please make sure that you're sharing images of your projects that you're working on. And we're going to work on wrapping this up in the next three-ish minutes because I see we've been on an hour and 27 minutes and I am getting quite tired. Miss Candace Smith says, I have an embroidery machine. We got a new Cricut Explore Air 2 named Sassy. <laughs> Ringing the bell again. on these new babies coming in here. He's going to be uh, a little bit frustrated. I'm going to have to brag to him. Uh, Linda L says, I think I'm going to name your new PE800 the gobbler when it eats your shirts. <laughs> Don't let it eat your shirts, ma'am. We're going to have to figure out how to keep that from happening. Don't name it the gobbler. Um, Patricia Mill says, you were trying to look at the PE800. You want a bigger hoop, but they seem to be a lot of problems in the reviews on Amazon. You're hesitant uh, a lot of cons well um i'm not sure i've heard someone else say something earlier today about some cons with that pe 800 and what i'll probably do tonight is take the time to read the reviews and see what the stuff uh these folks are complaining about and possibly get back to you and let you know that those problems are not something that you really need to be worried too much about because if it's a hoop issue I'm not understanding why you would have a hoop issue when the hoops have been working perfectly well with the 770 and the 700. Why would the 800 be any different when those hoops should be the same as the newer ones? Uh, so we'll see what's going on with it. Um, Cynthia said you tried about four weeks ago. You're welcome. Um, Maria says I embroidered a baby blanket and had some pulling. Any suggestions? Um, with it pulling, what do you mean pulling? Uh, in the hoop, is it pulling 
It was the minky fabric. Minky fabric, generally, I don't have very many issues with it as long as I hoop it snugly. You don't want to stretch it in the hoop. You don't want that fabric to stretch at all, actually. You actually can float that on your stabilizer if you want it to. Minky fabric, you don't want to stretch that. That could be part of the problem. I also use the water-soluble stabilizer on top. That should help as well. Um, and make sure that whatever design you're putting on it isn't uh, super dense either. Roan Kelly says, hi, while wow, you guys are still alive. Yes, yes, we are. I decided to extend it just a little bit since we had issues earlier. Charlotte Villa says, remind you how to get to the hoop group. It's at uh, www.thebabiesbooty.com. V-T-H-E, babies, B-A-B-Y-S booty b-o-o-t-y dot com and then click on join the hoop group sheila cushionberry says that you got the 800 and love it i've been hearing a lot of good things about the 800 i don't understand why folks are upset about it tammy croft yes i am in charlotte i am i am so what we can do just email me girl sometimes we can get together and say hi because i am often in the gas house <laughs> quite frequently i'm in gastonia actually i was just there uh day before yesterday uh there a lot simply jewel well hello how are you this will be up for a replay ma'am thank you for asking and welcome to our channel i don't remember ever seeing you post in here before so we appreciate you joining us the name of the digitizing program that i use there's a couple of them one is so art s-e-w-a-r-t so art is one but the main one that i personally use which is pretty expensive is called Wilcom Hatch. Wilcom Hatch is the name of the other uh, digitizing program that I use. Will's YouTube channel is Carolina Thread Place or Car Carolina Thread Place .com. Carolina Thread Place is the name of his YouTube channel. Carolina Thread Box, I'm not mistaken, is the name of his actual website. Um, Wendy says you have an older PE 600. Does that count? Well, of course it does. If it's new to you, it is new to us too. <laughs> is that what you're asking? Yes, we do ring the bell for new to you baby too. So congratulations on your new baby, especially if she's new to you. <laughs> we don't have a problem with that at all. Sharon says, good evening from Northeast Tejas. I was finally able to catch another live. Well, thank you. We appreciate you joining us again. I'm about to sign off, but definitely appreciate you joining us. Maria says, you floated it. You'll post a picture on the Who group. Okay, so the stretching very well could be, now if it was, t if it was cutaway stabilizer and you hooped it, not hooped it, you floated it and you're still having some pulling, um, that very well could be the density of the design that you're putting on there. Um, and it's going to be kind of difficult to tell for sure until I actually see it. Um, make sure also that your thread, um, your bobbin is in there pretty good and your tension is not too high. Sometimes your tension can be a little bit too high for uh, the fabric as well because that's a much softer fabric. But let's not get into the tension until we look at the picture and make sure uh, of what is actually going on the blanket. Thank you, Sharon, for the reminder to hit the like button. I appreciate that. Um, sewing machine, sewing and embroidery machine, sweetie pie, welcome to our channel. Um, as far as one that's great, that's it, sewing and embroidery, um, about $1,500 check with brother. Brother has excellent options roughly in that price range as well as the Husqvarna uh, embroidery machines in Joann's Fabrics and Crafts. They may have a good option as well. So definitely check that out. Simply Jewels says, thank you. You're a first timer. We appreciate you joining us. Looking forward to learning. I have a PE535 and a Cameo 3 named Mother, <laughs> Mother Cutter. Hilarious. I'm glad uh, you have a great machine with a funny name. <laughs> That's hilarious. Lupe, how are you, Lupe? Thank you for joining us. I'm trying to embroider a design created in Soul Art. 
But when I embroidered it, the bobbin thread showed and the stitches seemed to be way apart. What can I do? So art actually is uh, taught better by Clever Dog Designs. Check with uh, Clever Dog Designs. She's better to teach that because I don't teach digitizing at all. I'm actually learning to perfect my digitizing. So I'm not comfortable teaching digitizing just yet. Now, it does sound like your density is a little too high for whatever that design is, uh, but she would be better to instruct you on how to get that worked out. And she does have a Facebook support group, okay? So definitely check out Clever Dog Designs on Facebook. Her support group is there. Maria says, you have the Baby Lock Destiny 2. Has anyone used the IS Designer for digitizing? They will have to answer that IQ digitizer because I haven't heard of that one. Um, any model numbers? Your uh, brother, definitely check at the brother dealer. So I'm not sure how much the Dream Machine is now uh, because with the new, um, with the newest brother home single needle machine, the price of that Dream Machine has dropped drastically. Um, but I tell you what, Mm, check with your local brother dealer because I'm not sure of the model numbers. There are so many of them out there. It's difficult for me to even keep straight with the 4x4 and the 5x7 machines, actually. Um, and I don't even know all the model numbers of those. That's why usually when someone mentions one, like a HE1, I just found out is a 4x4 machine. Didn't know that. Um... But definitely uh, check with your local brother dealer and at um, Joanne's Fabrics and Crafts with the Viking machines, Viking Husqvarna. I know they have the, um, oh gosh, what is the name of that machine? It's the uh, Ruby Royale, I think it's Ruby. And then they have another one, I think it's like the Sapphire or something like that. And I know they've been having a pretty big sale on their machines lately too. So check them out as well. Their prices are about um, that much. And Gwen says, Lupe, go to Clever Dog site and try the Desire Stitches. And it will help with the gapping. So yes, uh, Clever Dog Designs is really good with So Art. So thank you guys for joining me this evening. We finally caught up with all of the chat. And I appreciate those who hung out with me despite the technical difficulties we had earlier with YouTube and the internet and the rain and who knows what all else was causing issues. So for those of us who joined us tonight, please give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed joining us uh, and the video. Also, please consider subscribing to our channel. We are live on Sundays, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with more uh, suggestions and helpful hints and tips and information for embroidery, especially beginners. We do definitely want to support you guys and make sure that you have a good time learning how to do embroidery. So I appreciate you all joining me uh, as always and look forward to seeing you all next week at the same time. So until the next time we see you, we want you to have happy embroidering. Thank you again for joining me and I look forward to seeing you all again next week. Bye. <laughs>